Hi, this is Don Wright. Santosh asked me to make a uh, quick overview video of the changes we've made to Business 233 in this minor revision. And I apologize, I don't have time to make this into a formal presentation, so I'm probably going to ramble here. And But I'm going to try to cover the things that we changed. The real thrust behind the change was, of course, to improve student outcomes, which means better grades, fewer drops. We approached that by trying to reduce clutter, visual clutter, cognitive overload that students see. One of the concerns I had is that students are intimidated when they, they reach the 233. The things that we can do to make it less intimidating for those first week to two weeks I think would be helpful. So let's look at course information start here. We made some changes here and if you remember the old table of contents it was much much denser a lot of stuff in there so we tried to weed out everything that did not pertain particularly to business 233 these are the the standard things that are required in every Excelsior course the only thing that is really 233 specific of course the syllabus which is we didn't change and the rubrics which we didn't change but everything else is is the same what we decided to do was put these new things in to a module zero. Uh, Santosh had and some other instructors had done this, done that in an accounting course, and it seemed to work well. And so we were going to build a module zero here to put the critical things about two, three, three. We felt students needed to have. Unfortunately, and you probably need to make an announcement, we were not allowed to change this. Where do I go from here in the start here section? It still has to say go to module one when we really want students to go to module two. So perhaps putting a little announcement to say, hey, after you finish start here, go to module zero, not module one. Back on the home page tab, you can see we've added the module zero here, course introduction. I'll click on that. Again, we're trying to make it clean and not intimidating. We have the introductory video about what to expect in, in Business 233 that, that we've used before. We have a new page about the textbook, which is simplified, but does call attention to the students that if they can use a digital text, and they can probably save some money. We have a new page about my stat lab. We've got a page about technology tools that's been refined and cleaned up from what we had in the old course. And then we've added a scavenger hunt which is something that, that uh, they've used in, in the accounting courses. Then, of course, the uh, questions and answers. This is the new textbook page. I hope you can see it, it's cleaned up quite a bit, but we do get across the message of students that they can save some money by buying uh, access to My Stat Lab and using the digital text. This is the new My Stat Lab page. It's, I think, a lot cleaner, hopefully less intimidating. We do give them some key information about the fact that all the homework, et cetera, is done there. We talk about how to get access. There's a new video for how to register for My Stat Lab, as well as the old PDF, and a link as to get to My Stat Lab for students to use. This is a new cleaned up a bit technology tool page. I would point out, oh, there's a lot of text on here. Everything they need to know is in this three minute video. That, that we provided and you've seen before. This is just a rehash of that. We are trying to nudge them, guide them, push them to use StatCrunch if they don't have skills with something else and to uh, be aware they do not have to buy a TI, TI calculator to pass this course. So hope that helps. We've added a scavenger hunt that was suggested and the idea there is to use a little bit of gamification to make a little bit of fun but to make sure students have gathered from what they've got out of the Start Here section and the Module Zero section certain key things. They have to complete the scavenger hunt. They do not get any points toward a grade, but they do have to complete it. It's very short, multiple choice. All of the answers come from the material that they should have already looked at as part of the Start Here and the Module Zero. We have made some changes in the active modules themselves. Module 1 is, is typical of that. One thing we wanted to do was to get rid of uh, the second weekly discussion 
if we could in the uh, eight-week term courses. But unfortunately, we have to have the 15-week and 18-week parallel, as you know. So that means we need a, dis a second discussion in each module in order to get students active every week in the course. As we all know, students don't do anything that isn't graded and gets them points. So that means the second discussion has to be a graded discussion. What we've tried to do is to make it less onerous, less like an academic exercise and more relevant. We'll be looking at that in a, a section. I did want to point out that we've made some changes to the learning and assessment activities pages. In the old course, there was a great deal of or overlap and redundancy between the learning and assessment activities pages and the module notes, and there were some conflicts between the notes and the assessment activities page. So we've cleaned that up a bit. It's still intimidating because it's meant to be a checklist for a student of everything that they need to do, what they need to read, what they need to view, what they need to submit, and the discussions they need to participate in. You might notice that we got rid of the the old narrated notes, PowerPoints that were in the learning and assessment activities because they were old, they were out of date, they were fourth edition, they were a pain to download and a lot of trouble for students. Again, they were redundant. We were requiring students to look at the narrated notes and on the same material, the PowerPoints that were in the module notes, and now we require them to watch the videos of my stat lab. So they were being forced to look at the same material three times, which again is a lot of, of mental workload and intimidation that first week. The module notes have been cleaned up and we've removed everything that was redundant, repetitive from the learning and assessment activities. We have a little bit of, of additional learning material that is labeled Extend Your Learning. Some of these are Pearson applets. Others are, are sections in the textbook that they need to pay attention to because we hit them later on. We, we've done that for all of the module notes, trying to make them cleaner. The first two discussions in Module 1, we're trying to get students to pick a technology. And again, that looks like a lot of um, uh, verbiage there. But in essence, it's just an overview again of the, the various technologies they, can, they need to choose and choose early. In my experience, I have a number of students who seem to procrastinate about making a choice and they get into the second week or third week even and they're all of a sudden saying, prof, what do I do? I don't know how to use Excel, I don't have a TI, and I don't know anything about StatCrunch. So we're trying to push them to make a decision and hopefully discuss about that in, in this first discussion. The second discussion is again trying to make statistics relevant for adult learners. As you know, that is very, very important. The last thing I want to show you, example is in here in Module 2, the second discussion in many modules now, almost every module where, except for exams in the uh, module one, we have this pick your problem discussion. It's graded, try not to make it too intimidating, but we're asking students to pick a problem that they're struggling with, either from the current module or past module, bring it forward, ask for help, show things they've learned, give resources, something that is really immediately relevant and helpful to students as opposed to an academic exercise. So I hope it helps. And really, that's it. Those are the changes that we were able to make in this minor revision. We didn't make any changes in my stat lab. We didn't change anything in the exams. We just primarily uh, refined and cut down the clutter. Each one of the modules, the learning and assessments, and the module notes, as I mentioned, have been cleaned up and refined and eliminated redundancies. And we've changed the second discussion in, in most modules so that it's not an academic type discussion and we hope that this helps.